everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi guys, welcome back to the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mommy J, your host, and today I have a great, great friend of mine. Her name is Kirsten. Her name is Kiss Kirsten. <laughs> Kirsten Millard. Kirsten. That is me. And um, that is her. That is she right here. And I'm just so excited to have her on here because not only is she my good friend, but she is like a bestie from college. We went to school together. We literally Dang. learned so much together. And we moved out to L.A., the second time, because I was coming yeah. back a second time when she was I was on her boss stuff. In listen, England. where were you? Somewhere, I was in over, somewhere over there, over the pond. And I was like, <laughs> I'm tired of being in LA. I'm gone. Right. And then she hits me up, and she's like, Uh, I'm coming to LA. Do you know anybody? I'm like, uh, me, me. actually. <laughs> so let's see what we can do. And then we started living together for yep. like a year. Yeah. And that whole time was an adventure. So it was, we had a lot going on. We'll a probably lot. dip into that. We'll get into it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it was a lot please, going on. Please welcome Kirsten. Hi everyone. Kirsten, yes. tell me about yourself. Who are Mamers. you? How was you doing? What's going on? <laughs> but just like Where Mama do we said, start? Thank you so much for having me on Victory Over Circumstance. I'm so proud of you, Mamers. I'm so Thank proud you, of what sis. you're doing in the industry Thank overall, you. like what you're championing. You have so many different things that you're championing between the black beauty roster, stuff Aww. that you have going on, and then, you know, doing this, creating this platform for women. I, I feel like it's not, is it just women or is it? It's women it's, right now. It's women right now, but that's why I'm like, we never put a cap on things. That, no. That'll preach right there because I'm like, we never put a cap on things never. because you never know you where never platforms know. can go. So Amen. anyways, I'm just so proud of you for Aww. everything that you're doing and thank, thank you for you. having me on this platform. I love you, Kira. I love thank you. you. I know, y'all, we, we're trying to get ourselves together because Aww. we're really excited to see each other because, you know, our time it's was- been forever. Ba- it's been forever and our time was basically cut off together. I think we thought we were going to be with each other much longer than we actually were, but- you know, God's plan and everything. God's plan is the greatest plan. God's plan and is the, that's the word. You know God's I mean? plan is the greatest plan. And, Period. you know, we're just excited to see each other. So we're just kind of like smiling like, hi, friend. And we're like, okay, we got to talk. That's my baby, <laughs> y'all. Like, okay. y'all don't understand. That <laughs> the disrespect in the background. <laughs> I'm going to let that go. Don't let that go. We waiting. Right. But yeah, <laughs> my girl, like Kirsten is my girl. We were definitely, uh, our time together was cut short, but for, is it for good reason? Yeah. Slash, it yeah. was confusing. What do, what do you call it? I don't yeah. know. It's not good reason, but it's not. Yeah, not good God's, reason, God's but it's God's plan. It's exactly. like, I feel like with that situation and what she's talking about is I got sick basically. So Long story short, I left LA after I got sick. And so, you know, I feel like in everything that happens, though, you can always find the silver lining. Exactly. And you always got to rely on God. I mean, that's how I made it through. Amen. I ran on faith. Amen. Mommy knows I have a, a clothing line or whatever where our our thing is running on faith. And yes. I ran on faith that whole way. I should have worn my sweatshirt. I know. We Damn. both should. Why did we I should have worn my sweatshirt. We slipping, y'all. I didn't think about it. I didn't we think about it. We could have been Dang. on here promoting stuff. And I, I got really on somebody have. else's shirt. You see? Shout out to you, but it ain't my shirt. <laughs> I'm like, we could have been on here shirt. promoting we got to get into it. That would just mean we're going to do an episode, the uh, second one. Yeah. Because we'll come back with our with our merch. Okay? And we might have to. We might yeah. have to. Because I feel like um, you are just so, uh, like, you have so much to you. You have so much going on, so much that you're working on. And, yeah. I mean, for as long as I've known you, you've been such an entrepreneur. You got Beatbox. And we'll yeah. get into more of this, but... You've got beatbox. You're yeah. working on a book, hopefully. I know. Hopefully, pray you know, for me, y'all. <laughs> a clothing line, and you have your, um, you know, faith merch. Yep. And you know your blog. 
Like you're a doing, lot going on. You are. You're doing a when lot. When somebody else starts talking about it, it's like, oh, wait. Yeah, wait, when somebody else, and like, the thing is, like, we see you. Yeah. The people oh. around you that care about you, we see we you. See and you. everything, like, the same way you you said those things, I'm like, dang. Yeah. Sometimes you forget. And like, I only said a couple of things that you, you know, got going on. Look, we let, just give us a minute to hype, our, hi, hi, hype ourselves up. up. That's how we do. I'm like, just give us a minute. Because I'm like, honestly, I, I dropped two things, but really, my man has so many other things We're, we're both on. doing so much. And the thing is, like, when, when um, you're with people that yeah. like inspire you like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna I, I like I'm inspired by you yeah I'm inspired by you and I hope that I inspire you like yeah. we all we all inspire each other and we're always yeah. trying to like push each other I think um, that's forward. a basis of our relationship really because like we still have calls which we have to reignite um we still have to get into also it. with Renee Renee we talking to you boo we have to reignite we were supposed to be doing these um like consistent boss calls, girl boss meetups. girl meetups or whatever and it's just uh, again everybody life. knows life happens and we just all have so much stuff going on but we but need helps. to reignite our calls it helps. to yeah. have a community to have um um like a sisterhood someone someone yeah. that you can just a safe space yep that you can just talk to people about what you're going through the trials yeah. the tribulations everything um it, it helps especially when we're as we're going to do something that we've never done. I've never right. had a business where, you know, I'm selling yeah. to people. So to me, it's something so foreign. Yep. Somebody else might be like, but mommy, you're this. But I'm like, but, right. but it's still kind of like dipping your foot into yeah, this a is new completely world, new, new a territory. new pond. <laughs> yeah, so, so it like, helps to talk yeah. to somebody who's done it or just doing it Yeah. at the same pace. Yeah. We can figure it out together. So I, I think it helps. And that's, that's the part the right there, point. figure it out together. Exactly. And that's the whole point of you know, victory over circumstance in the first place. Like, I just want this to be a platform, a place for where you all can feel, um, you know, like you have a community to yeah. come and speak and talk about whatever is going on with you, yeah. you know, whether it's personal or business or what have you, whether you just want to share your own story, whatever it is, like, I want this to be a place where you feel at home. You can get onto the platform Excuse my puppy, y'all. For those watching, my puppy is just jumping all over the place. (laughs) But I want you guys to feel empowered to tell your stories. I want you to feel empowered to share because that is where you get your most from. For me, the stories that I was most like afraid to talk about and Mm -hmm. felt almost like, um, felt almost like ashamed to talk about when it yeah. came to my family or how I was raised and certain yeah. things that I used to be ashamed of instead of taking pride in yeah. until I finally started talking about it and realizing like, oh, this is not that it was a normal upbringing yeah, or a normal experience, but like story. you gave, I gave life to it. Mm-hmm. And because of that, somebody else was like, oh, wow. Like I, I see to identify you. with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were able to relate with me, identify themselves in me, and mm-hmm. and like they're able to just just see me in a different light that I didn't even see myself in because I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, you know what I mean. So my point is, I just really hope that this is also a place where you guys you feel yeah. invited to come join in on the conversation. I think Obviously, it definitely is because that's what um, the beatbox thing that I'm doing. So I'm trying man. to revive a business, guys. Um, so I had a beauty business. It was a subscription box. I'm doing something else in the beauty sector now, but beatbox was all about exactly what you yes. just said. It was about, sh- I, I interweaved a, um, theme into it. Beatbox, if you know, makeup, it's like girl beat your face, whatever, but it's also a platform where women and whoever can share their beat stories. And so when you just said mm. that, like, who, how can I did it? And this is something I came up with in 2015. I think mm-hmm. I originally had beatbox confessions mm-hmm. and it was all about like women and whoever sharing their beat stories so we can relate to each other because Boom. I think I, that was probably a year where I was like, whatever I was going through personally, I realized like when you talk to somebody instead of just hiding, hiding your story, it. when you actually open up about it and talk about it, um, people are able to identify with you and then you guys are able to come together and you know, you never know what can happen. I mean, there's power and unity. Um, And so that, what you just said about the identifying with each other that spoke to me, because I'm like, that's what beatbox basically the, um, what do I want to call it? Yeah. The mission aspect of beatbox Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is all about like sharing beat stories. So you can encourage somebody else and inspire somebody else to beat their own situation. Amen. Amen. Cause at the end of the day, like, 
and, and like obviously the missions are very similar and I feel like we're we're just entering a time where people are just lifting up the veil yeah. of the like they're just lifting up the veil. Yeah. We've seen it in, in society. Things are being blown apart. Yeah. And I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm here for it too. I'm so over like I feel like the gates have been opened. Yes. You know, and I feel it in the the time, the energy, the things yeah. that we're going through. Everything is just we're being ushered we're into being ushered a into new into time and literally, a new dimension in this like in this society, in yeah. this reality that we live in. Yeah. And um it's refreshing. It was so needed. And that's why I love somebody like Cardi B, for example, yeah. who is so Ooh, real so herself. and raw mm-hmm. and so herself. Like it's just like Take me as I'm a, I take am. Take me as I am. Don't take Either me. Either way, at all. I'm live, I'm living my life and yeah. I'm I'm doing great. So yeah. what's up? Yep. And I think that's why people like they don't know why they love her yeah. or but that's love why. to hate her. She she can be seem as crazy as she wants you know to be, saying? but it's like we love her because she's she just honestly, you either just love herself. her or you love to hate her. Either yep. way, you're paying attention. You're paying attention because she's, she's being, being herself. herself mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. You feel me? And I respect that so much because it takes some real courage to mm-hmm. just be yourself, be yourself. Mm-hmm. and just be. She really like makes no apologies for you who she me? is and just take up space. Yeah, like really unapologetically because yeah. I feel like we say that a lot. But who's really living that? Living their truth. Un, you know, live your truth mm. unapologetically. And yeah. it is it is something that is so, so real when you get to a space where you can do that. I yeah. was having a conversation with my girlfriend the other day, too, about, like, how she admires how, like, I've been more, you know. Because I've, I've been trying to be as open as I can since mm. forever. But it really is hard to, yeah. like, really share your most you know inner inner thought. intimate yeah. yeah because you always think someone's gonna judge somebody is always yeah. gonna judge and so what you yeah what it's like when you get to that point where you realize and so what somebody used to always say what is it they like they're, they're people are gonna talk about you whether you're doing bad good or nothing at all That's so it. it's like choose one like live your truth there's always going to be somebody having something to say but at the end of the day my motto is what does God say about what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. What is, you know, what's, what's the background on mm-hmm. that? What, what is, that's, that's my standard basically. So it's like, whenever I'm feeling like I don't want to share something or walk in my quote unquote mm-hmm. truth, mm-hmm. always remind myself, it doesn't matter what so-and-so, so-and-so thinks. So-and-so thinks, whoever it's like, what does God say about this? Period. Cause it's like, we can get caught up in that, but I, I feel you on that open, open the uh, gate stuff. Like we're yeah. really, with our yeah. generation is literally that generation where my mom always talks about how their generation, the generation before us is kind of like, they're kind of like the generation that was the first ones coming off the heels of like abrupt racism yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like they kind of the just of went with the flow. Yes, exactly. They just kind of like went with the flow, mm-hmm. got jobs, security. work jobs, security, Whatever. My mom always talks about how mm-hmm. our generation mm-hmm. is not like that. At we all. we are not just getting jobs. We are wanting to live lives that are fruitful in Amen. every aspect, Amen. not just financial, but um, mental. Like if my job is terrible, we rather We're go. Out. We rather go lay We're on the out. couches, a uh, couch, uh, lay on a friend's couch until we are able to get in a position versus work a job where like you I have to be there. Happiness and and fulfillment. Yeah. We have it's the privilege, exactly. We yeah. have the privilege, the audacity. That's a good word, to, privilege. You feel me? Yeah. To think about what am I passionate about? Yeah. What do I want to do? What drives me? What makes me happy? We have the privilege and audacity to think about those things. That's they good. didn't. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have it. They really did not. And like, for example, my mom coming from a different country yeah. and different culture there they really, really yeah. was about survival yep that was just get with who you need to get with marry who you need to marry so that you're good yeah you know what i'm saying yep. so it, it was really like survival it was literally survival based that's like it. that's what drove the majority of their decision that making exactly. that decision making they're like no i have to survive i have to provide for my family and, and not it. to say that we don't think about those things we just think about so many more things and i feel like it's yeah. also because we're we're exposed to so much information yes. so like yes. you can't just come and tell us that this is the way that i have to go we're, exactly. we, we challenge the status quo exactly. we, we challenge the status quo so i'm like i feel like our generation is just that generation that like you said has the privilege and the 
like we we have the audacity to mm-hmm. challenge things mm-hmm. and i'm like i think there's a beauty in that and i think there's completely. definitely a beauty in it so completely. I'm, I'm appreciative because i'm not just gonna work no nine to five that part <laughs> that part it. and you know what i'm saying hey nothing wrong with working your nine nothing to five wrong with working a nine to five you know? just make sure you you love it right you know right. that's what i would say don't stay in a, any situation not even just talking about jobs or whatever any but situation. any situation don't stay in a situation that you're just unhappy in yeah. like you try to try Life your best to get short. out of it now granted you have to make decisions sometimes to where you have to stay in a situation until you can move to that right. new situation right. so i feel like there's always balance and everything and like you got to utilize wisdom but at the same time we're all about a being total total life happiness Period. it's not just about having one thing we're all about total life nothing. happiness i'm trying to be abundant mm-hmm. and and be thriving mentally mm-hmm. physically financially Same. emotionally and be in the gym every right? all the leaves <laughs> all the leaves <laughs> all the leaves okay <laughs> listen because we're not we can't have one without the other i can't yeah. be financially successful and be mentally messed up yeah you you might as well not be like financially yeah. secure. like you can't have one without the other and i think that's one thing that our generation were we're really like mm-hmm. no I want it all and we can have it all yeah if we go really, for it we were going for it mm-hmm. so I'm proud of us yeah. for sure and I'm just like and I think the pressure though that also comes with all of that because mm-hmm. we have so much access to information we have so much like yeah. we're being stimulated yeah. left and right with so much mm-hmm. that like I don't even know what to do anymore because I'm just like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm all over the place. And I'm just like, I'm really where I'm at right now is focusing. But I, oh my goodness, I'm you took the word out of my mouth. I'm trying to focus, focus. on hey, one focus thing. On Listen, me. me. <laughs> Y'all going to get the, okay, vocals. Baby, can you focus <laughs> on, on me? me. <laughs> all right, on me. All right. <laughs> Focus is so serious and such a real topic for us. That was a good point because I feel like that's part of like my, I feel like I'm in in the middle of a new victory over circumstance story. Mm, Like I feel like, I mean, everybody, not everybody, some of you watching this probably might not know, but I was long story short diagnosed with cancer in 2019 mm-hmm. when me and mommy were living together so mommy mm-hmm. walked through me walked with me through that process and that's a whole victory over circumstance story right there and we i mean did you want to finish what you're about to say because i yeah. feel like we need to get into that yeah we can definitely get into that um but i guess i'll so i feel like as a re- i would be def- we definitely could get into that but mm-hmm. as a result of that experience mm-hmm. of going through chemo and cancer and stuff like that mm-hmm my life has changed significantly. And so right now I'm working in ministry in Louisiana Mm -hmm. and that's not where I pictured myself. Mm -hmm. And so like when I say um, right now I'm in a new victory over circumstance, Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm writing it as we speak because I'm trying to navigate these new waters that I didn't really necessarily picture myself Mm -hmm. in, but I have peace about where I'm at right now. But it's still like, it's it's like one of those things where you can have peace about your situation, but you can still like feel like this is not where I thought I would be right, or where right. I envisioned it's myself a stepping being. Stone. It's, a it's stepping just stone. another um, stop along your journey. Another stop. You know, and it's going to be another yep. thing. And I, I, I see it. It's yep. another piece of your puzzle another piece of the puzzle you know to your the voc story and it's like VLC that's another story. circumstance yeah that is your being that's it, you know circumstance. that 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 is in your not I'm in your finding way, but victory you're in my with. circumstance exactly right now. I'm literally exactly finding the victory and i'm like and the way i find it is i just trust god all exactly. the way through i should take these off because i don't want it to be ringing in the thing um i feel like um let me do this yeah, before yeah before yeah, you talk i'm like I just I know that Thank from you. I know that from what you would call it from at church my mom be having the same stuff mm-hmm. on. Anyways, um, so yeah, I feel like I'm in the middle of that. My circumstance right now is a circumstance that I didn't necessarily see myself in, and so now that I'm in it, I have peace about where mm-hmm. I'm at. But I'm important. also right. I'm 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 also looking for and trusting God for where this circumstance is taking me because it's not necessarily a circumstance that I saw myself being in. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, that's a whole nother story. But the cancer story, you want me to get into that? So what? before we get into that, yeah. uh, I want to just give the people, the people, a little bit of more background about you. Like, yeah. where did you grow up? How was your your journey to get to how how do we even end up in LA rooming yeah. together? Yeah, so I was so me and mom May went to college together in Richmond, Virginia, VCU, stand up, Virginia Commonwealth. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Rams go. Um go Rams go. <laughs> go but Rams go. um so we went to college together in Richmond. We became really good friends there. Um and so after and she's college, from Maryland. I'm from Maryland 301 PG you know, stand up. Maryland. <laughs> But we became, an- exactly. So we're, we went to school together and we're both Maryland PG. Well, nope. My mate is a MoCo girl. I'm a MoCo girl. She's a MoCo girl. Yes, Montgomery guys, County. Montgomery County. Okay. So anyways, both Maryland girls. DMV so we remained up. close, pretty close after um, college. I moved back. My mate was whisked off into awesome world where you, you uh, most of you know my mate's story. <laughs> but I went back to um, home and started working in the government and in, um, for yeah, basically in the government, government contracting. Mm-hmm. And so I have always not wanted to work a nine to five. Like I literally remember, um, or if I I won't say a nine to five specifically, but I've always not wanted to be in that conventional corporate conventional yeah. world. Yes, mm-hmm. that's it. And so I remember like as early as maybe like being a freshman at high school, I mm-hmm. always my dad So did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Like I feel like or I did. Like you just wanted to you just knew you wanted to own a business but you didn't know what? Yes, that's, that's where it, I was at. What you just said is okay. exactly where I was because I Same. knew I wanted to own a business and I, I saw my dad, he's in the corporate mm-hmm. world and he's been in the corporate world for probably 30 years mm-hmm. now. And so I watched him live that life um nine to five mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. great great job mm-hmm. provide for his family mm-hmm. he does not hate his job anything mm-hmm. like that but mm-hmm. I did not want the same mm-hmm. things I was like I don't want to do this I want mm-hmm. flexibility yeah. in my work whatever flexibility freedom exactly so yeah. I remember telling him that like I remember asking him asking him one day like dad I don't know how you go to get up and go to work do the same thing every day mm-hmm. I just never wanted that mm-hmm. but it's funny that I never wanted that because literally since high school from like summer internships to after high school and during college I've always held like some type of Mm -hmm, corporate mm -hmm, structured Mm -hmm, nine mm -hmm. to five and so mm -hmm. like I feel like but that's why you knew you couldn't do that 24 I know I was like I just gotta get out of this like I don't want to do this and again granted there are people like one of my best friends Ashley she works a nine to five she loves it that's the Mm -hmm. life that she loves Mm -hmm. everybody's wired differently so I'm all for the you know yeah. Stop bashing people who yeah. want to work nine to five. I don't like, know why that even. I don't know why that's a thing. Like pe- I, it's like entrepreneurship we, used to be the other way around. Where yeah. it's like, oh, so you don't got a job. So you ain't got a job. Okay, entrepreneur. Now, okay. I feel like Instagram made it like it's Instagram. It's Instagram. You always listen. You always Instagram switched the tide of <laughs> like did. what entrepreneur means because it now made it look cool. Yeah, we saw all these actual entrepreneurs yeah. who were innovative and doing all these cool things. Yeah, living their life yeah. and living being lavishly yep. so now everybody's like wait i don't have to work i want to do that exactly everybody's I like to i want to do that want, yeah yep so and so i always knew that i did not want to do that but found myself i always knew from an early age that i did not want to do that mm-hmm. um and so anyways i was working in that corporate world in 2018 and then an opportunity came for me to move out to LA. It literally came out of nowhere. Um, a mutual family friend, um, somehow they knew that I was interested in like pursuing different opportunities or whatever. And they brought an opportunity to me that was in the entertainment industry supporting an actress or whatever. And so- Can we say who? We can say who. Um, it was um, Molly off of Insecure. Guys, Molly She's amazing. on Insecure. Oh my God. <laughs> She's amazing. So um, you all, uh, many people know know her as molly um but her name in real life is yvonne orgy she has an awesome book coming out she's an awesome person she has a book coming out called bamboozled by jesus and um it's like y'all met in uh, uh, like in church like yes she she was at your dad's church right no so she was at my the same we all went to the same church in maryland so 
Um, my parents have a church in Louisiana now, but we all went to the same. We all came out of the same church That's essentially so cool. in Maryland. That is exactly. So cool. and, and so like, that I don't know, but the the the, the world is so small because yeah. my uh, one of my good friends in Guzzi, who's the founder oh, yeah. of Heat Free Hair, mm -hmm. had told me about her friend. Nigerian comedian yeah. who I need to meet because she has this show that she's developing and I yeah. need to be in it and that she needs to make this introduction. I yep. was like, who's this girl? And okay, sure. Like, who is it? So she's like, you need to meet her. And I never got to meet her until we bumped into yeah, each other at, at store, Trader right? Joe's. Yeah, I was like, you had the grocery and store. this Yvonne Orgy, yep. that's her friend that mm -hmm. she was telling me about. And I didn't even know who she was at the time, but, um, after the show had aired, obviously then I knew who yeah. she was. And I was like, oh my God, you're yeah. the friend that my friend has been begging me to like, go right. meet. I was like, well, yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> but we uh, randomly met at a Trader Joe's one Which time. Which is so random. And then she's like, yeah, come watch the um, Dave Chappelle show with us. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Like, okay, And friend. gave me her number and everything. I was just like, you are just so cool. Yeah. Like just Super off sweet. the strength, because she didn't know me, yeah. but just off the strength of her other friends. And I don't even think she even knew that at the time that I was, mm -hmm. but I think I said something to her. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, wow, for you to be so nice and so warm open and inviting in. and open. Like she's like, real life. You nice. real, real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also it doesn't hurt that we from the DMV and we, okay, some, period, we some DMV real people. Okay, but Maryland. back to your story. Cause I just wanted to make a point. Like she's real as hell. She's, and she's um, super, she's a beautiful person. Small world. Yes. Small so world. anyways, I came, I got an opportunity to work with her and um, that's how I ended up in LA. And so literally it was a whirlwind um, decision. Like, I feel like I made the decision like, in like a week wow. within like a month or two. Um, I had moved here. So this, wow. I think I had initially, was quick. it was quick. I think I had initially found out about it in November, 2018 by January 2019, I was landing in wow. LA. <laughs> and me that and my was May. quick. <laughs> exactly. So anyways, um, I, I hit up my maid cause I was like, girl, what I like, tell me about what's these going on living in LA? like yeah, I'm like, what's going on in LA? I'm I coming said I'm moving ghetto. in. Right, right. She <laughs> talked, she dogged it. No, she did. She no, I was like, she dogged LA, but um she literally I hit her up and I was like, girl, I'm moving here. I was like, where do I go? I knew she had been out here flourishing. So I was like, my mate, what do I do? And it just so happened that my mate was moving back to LA from uh where were you at? I was in based London. in London. I was about to say you were in UK somewhere. So she was based in London and look, she's trying just, to go to London. Honey's trying to go to Guys, to my puppy just keeps <laughs> invading our she our wants talk. to be on Victory. So she has okay. a circumstance. She Don't she try does. to bite me. She's being bad today to Auntie Kier. She said, don't try to bite me. Look, she clearly has a, a story that she wants to tell. We'll yeah. get to you, honey. On, we'll get bark, to you. Bark, bark. Scene. So, so, yeah. That's where... You were in London. Yes. And then we came to LA. We found an apartment literally in like a week or two. Literally. And we were on a hunt. <laughs> started living together. And it was amazing. Like, we had so much, so much, so much fun. I know. And We um, was everywhere. We was on moves. Listen. Oh, oh we have God. an epic story. Shall we tell them Grammy, a story about Grammy we might weekend? Well. Grammy weekend in LA, y'all, is, is pretty... <laughs> it was litty. It was interesting. My May had us everywhere. And it was interesting. But I just like to say that I twerked on Drake that night. She twerked on Drake that night. And I will never forget it, Drake. Listen. Drake, if you're listening, call what's me. up? <laughs> call me. <laughs> Drake, I know I'm engaged, but call me too. <laughs> right, right. Don't let call me hear. call me too. Don't let my fiance hear. But call call us please. Okay. Call me. Cool. Okay. Anyway. Anyways, well, we can go there together. We can okay, well yeah. So anyways, um, so anyways, got out to LA. I was here January. Me and my mate were flourishing, living together. We <laughs> twerking on Drake. Twerking on Drake, living the, the, our, the best LA life. One of my other best friends lives out here. And so it was just really enjoying life. It, it was, was so different for me. It was. Um, but I was really just enjoying it. And so lo and behold, it was the last time me and my mate went out. I was complaining that day about... Yeah. Um, yeah, just come back from a Vegas trip. Vegas trip. And I was complaining that day. We were out celebrating Emily's birthday. Mm -hmm. And I was complaining while we were there about like my chest um, hurting or whatever. Like just feeling like discomfort in my chest. And so I honestly didn't think too much about it. Like I'm, this, is, I'm, this is coming from a person who has never been sick in their life. Like never, you know, had broke a bone. Never like have been admitted for any serious illness and so you know I, I honestly just was like oh, maybe it's i'm just cold, like, it's a cold right, whatever 
And so um, ended up having, to, I ended up going to urgent care. They, long story short, diagnosed me with pneumonia. Two weeks later, they cleared me for pneumonia. And then I started having issues again. Like, I, like you know how you know your body. And so I started having issues. Like, nah, pneumonia should was, be gone by now. That's what All they the said. Antibiotics. Yep. So we're like, eh. That's literally what the urgent care said yeah. because I was feeling so bad. I called my brother and my mother, and my um, employer was um, really concerned about me too. And I was just feeling so bad because I had been out for pneumonia, but then went back to work and. I was okay at the beginning of that day. And by the end of that day, I literally felt like I had been beat, beaten. Like wow. I felt so like exhausted. I was like, this is not normal. Wow. And so I called urgent care. Well, I called my family first and they were like, you know, they were trying to tell me go to the hospital right then. But I, I really didn't want to because, you know, when you go to the hospital, you got to wait, whatever. I was like, no, I just need to relax, whatever. So anyways, I called urgent care and asked urgent care. I was like, hey, this is what I'm feeling like can I just, you know, come in tomorrow, like, you know, do something else? And they were like, no, you need to go to mm -hmm. the ER because they were like, yep. They were like, you need to go to the ER because the antibiotics should have, you know, taken right. care of everything. You know, pneumonia is nothing to play with. Right. Like, so I know so many people who have, you know, unfortunately yeah. um, passed from yeah. pneumonia and you just wouldn't think, but it's a very serious thing. Yeah. So anyways, go to ER. I was literally in ER for a super 19 hours. That night they ran a CT scan and that's when they saw a mass. And so long story short, that is how I walked in to a cancer journey that I never even thought that I would be walking in Insane. my life. And that time, at that time yeah. I was what? We're so old now. Like, God, so old. <laughs> like 27, 26. I, we're so old. Yeah. I was 26, 26 at the time. Turning yep. 27. Yep. Turning 27. So never thought I would be walking into like, that would be my story at 26. And so that right there is a circumstance that I had to believe God yes. that I would get victory get over. And I had to, you know, continuously find Amen. a way to run on faith yes. in the midst of that um, whole situation. Mom may walk through me with that. I feel mm -hmm. like we'll cherish that forever because she was mm -hmm. so, I'm always so appreciative of mommers because we were roommates, but um, my family, you know, of course wanted to be there for me. And so they were all flying out on schedules and stuff, literally. basically, literally. Like, I was never not alone. So thankful to my family for that. But I'm so thankful to Mommers because that. she, you know, the, you could have a roommate. And honestly, just justified, it's a lot to be living in a space and have to, like, basically share your space mm -hmm. with someone's family. Like, listen, they all became my roommates. Oh, and we were all okay. roommates. And it was fine. And that's we're why, all roommates. That's we're why, all listen, family. Exactly. That's why, listen, choose your roommate wisely because, listen, Seriously. if anything happens, Ooh, you child. need to know that you're working with somebody who knows how to respect somebody's space, know how, knows how to communicate family. with someone, be yeah. family, because some yes. people are just trifling, like, I've you heard know, too many horror stories. Too many horror child. stories. So child. thankfully, everything was fine. But I'm so thankful to Mommers because she literally just ushered my family in and everything like was just smooth. We Thank all God. just were focused on getting through that. Getting and so, everybody's focus was yep. Kirsten and making her as comfortable as possible yes. during this this process. And if anything, I learned so much from her family coming into our home because I'm just like, this is what family looks like. This yeah. is what family does when someone is in need. And I was so yeah. inspired by your family. And I even, I mean, I talked about it with, to, to Jesse. We were like, dang. Yeah, yeah. This is. <laughs> and Jesse cl and, clicked with my mom. Too. Yeah. They, had, they, they were having <laughs> Jesse's my like, big sis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, they were like clicking and everything. And I'm just like, we were just having a conversation. And we're like, God, yeah. coming from where we come from and the situations that we came from, yeah. where, you know, we basically were raised, you know, on our own, we yeah. raised ourselves and like, we didn't really have that family unit yep. to, to see. We're kind of like seeing Kirsten and her family, the way that they rallied around her and came out for her. I'm talking yeah. mom, dad, brother, and uh, sister-in-law, <laughs> yeah. grandma, grandpa, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They all came out and that was so beautiful for me to see. I'm just like, this is the family that yeah. I aspire to have. In yeah. Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm in agreement. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. even Jesse was like, child, if God forbid, if I had cancer, I would die. I don't know. And I was like, oh, don't say that. But like, I no, get we you. We have her Because she, okay? like, <laughs> she was like, listen, nobody could have come out for her. Yeah. And that's, I, and going I was like, through Damn. that really, you like, see that. you know, growing up when you have, when you have, 
that type of family and whatever growing up, you don't realize how foreign it can be yeah. and not normal. And so like as I've grown up, I've realized that there's so many people who have to find victory in that type of circumstance yeah. because they don't necessarily have the same type of mm-hmm. family structure. Mm-hmm. So as I've gotten older and going through that, that's something that I've become so grateful mm-hmm. for because I realized like that's a, this it's, is, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. And it I was is. like, you know, God, I thank you. And yes. I pray that, you know, across the board, we can like form more families yes. that have that bond and can yes. be there for each other. Because I feel like the family unit, unit in today's society is something that kind of is like, you know, yeah. you know, kind of not withered thing, away, almost. withered away, or yeah. not not as held to a highest standard. Yeah. And I feel like it's okay um, to not have family. Like I feel like it's okay. Like you shouldn't feel any type of way because you don't have family. Because I believe God gives us provision yes. in our circumstances. Yes. So you know, it's okay. Don't feel any type of way. But at the same time, I do feel like that we got to put family units and, you know, fighting for our families. Because yes. it's so easy yes. to, as we grow up, throw your family yes. away, have an argument yes. and decide, I'm not talking to you. But it's, it comes to that, it, you have to get to a point with your family unit. Now, some, yes. now let's put this caveat in there. Right. Sometimes your family is crazy and you need to remove yourself from right. those And that's okay too. Just that's because okay. we're blood does not mean you need to tolerate exactly. their abuse. If somebody is toxic, abusive, remove yourself from that situation. Right. Period. But at the same time, I feel like you have to use wisdom in certain situations yes. and learn how to fight for your family unit right. instead of just always writing each other off right. because there's, there's power in unity. There's there really power is. in having a family unit and being able to um, rely and have that support. So really anyways, is. I'm so thankful for something not to be that. taken for granted. Not, for don't sure. never take that for granted for sure. because there's so many, there's so many people that don't have that. Yeah. And, you know, you really should be grateful for any everybody out there who has like that type of family unit, mm-hmm. or maybe there might be somebody watching that who's mm-hmm. like thinking, I need to go hit up my mm-hmm. mom or mm-hmm. I need to go hit up my dad, mm-hmm. my aunt, whatever, because you know what, we can move past mm-hmm. this situation. Mm-hmm. This that argument or that disagreement that we have is not worth not having right. the relationship. So, anyways, I feel like we just went, we just got into a I whole mean, other thing. No, I mean, that's so much. It's good, very necessary. Good stuff. Yeah, so so necessary because yeah. I. That's something that for for me for a long time I almost resented my parents for yeah. like not being in that situation longer. Yeah. So um, it's something that I now at like what maybe twenty six twenty seven yeah started to really let go and really understand like yeah. the reasons why the decisions Put were yourself made in their shoes. Yes, yeah. because now at, the older I get, the more I realize and understand for myself what it yeah. means to be an adult figuring life mm. out with three kids. Like you know what I'm saying? Like parents they, are amazing. Listen, I don't see how y'all do it. Honestly, <laughs> like, I don't. And I, I don't the, the older I get, the more I, I really relate to them and understand yeah. the decisions that were made and who they are as people, not yep. just as mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And as that's people, good. they are t- completely different. Yeah. So I'm like, really get to know that's that's a homework assignment for all of us, is really get to know your parents. Yeah. And understand and really understand who they are as individuals. Mm-hmm. Outside of being your mom, because we yeah. know mom, mom is this, that, that, that. But who but is who is that person? You know, who, who are is they? She? Who are they in yeah. outside of that mom role? Right. Who is this person that we like? know her to be? And exactly. I, That's doing good. trying to do that more has really like not. To, I don't want to say humanized because they are, yeah. human, but like I mean, like grounded me in understanding who they are. Yeah. And and I I'm, a, I'm able to forgive them yeah. so much and more. Give them grace. Give them in grace certain situations. Because they were understand. just figuring it out. Yep. We were all we're all figuring, figuring it out. Figuring it out. The and like I said, the older I get, the more I'm like, cause the moment I feel like, oh my God, I've gone through so much now. I know yeah. who I am. And I've <laughs> yeah. I've got it figured something out. Else. <laughs> Boom. Something Bam. else. <laughs> Like now, you ain't who man. you this thought a, you was. This is a new circumstance. This is a new circumstance. <laughs> oh my God, who am I now? And like, I'm just yeah. like, what the heck? It never yeah. ends. So yeah. that's one thing I've come to realize is you never stop growing. You, you never, never stop, stop learning. You mm. never stop evolving. Mm-hmm. And you just never, it just never stops. Yeah. And the moment you stop, 
Yeah. You're dead. Yeah, like, what are you you're doing? Not you're not living anymore. And if you just consciously are like, I'm done growing, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how you can do that. Yeah. I just don't know how you can do that. You must yeah. be Jesus. I don't know. Right. Because, like, if you're Jesus, we wouldn't need, we wouldn't need help. Right. Anyway. We wouldn't need help. So, <laughs> right. Exactly. Clearly. clearly That's a good you got to figure it out. Stop. Right. <laughs> she said, you got to figure it out. Clearly. That was good. You never stop growing. Because, you never honestly, do. I feel like life always, just like you said, life always presents new circumstances. Yes. And that's what the running on faith thing is always yes. about. No matter what you run into, run on faith. Run on it. faith. What is that thing uh, Beyonce mom say at the end of that song? She, she it's, that, it's that recording that she said. Oh, okay, it's not okay. that you're going through it. It's she, some, something about going through it. Like She's like, when you go through something, you're going through it, mm-hmm. meaning you're going to mm-hmm. come out on the other side. Amen. So, you know, that term that we always yes. have, oh, I'm going through Exactly. You're going, You're going through. through. Amen. Keep going through it. Amen. So I'm like, whenever Beyonce's like mom said that on the end of, I think it's Solange that song. Ring Off. It's Ring Off what? by Beyonce. So oh, y'all can look it up. Oh, okay, it's okay, by okay. Beyonce. Okay. It was like a deluxe song on like oh, one deluxe. of the albums when a couple years ago. Okay. And it's called Ring Off. So go listen to it, y'all. It's really good. So I like at the it. end of it, but go through it keep going you because got to in go every circumstance it. you got to believe that you're gonna get the victory on the other side amen amen i appreciate that so much yeah and i feel like after um i mean it, it was a almost a year-long ordeal with yeah. cancer yeah the battle uh, including recovery recovery yeah. mm-hmm. and then um i remember i left to ghana in 2019 mm-hmm to see my parents and spend some time in Ghana. And I, when I came back 2020, Kirsten's like, I'm cancer free. And I mean, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Like, yeah, thank you. Lord. I, I mean, we knew this we wasn't knew. your portion and you weren't going to, you weren't received. You wasn't going to go through this forever. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was just a weird period of time, but it was I, very weird. I just was like, this ain't for her. This ain't it, her. It, that's how everybody felt. Everybody and was I like, feel this ain't like for her. Even when I talk about it now, like talking about it, every yeah. time I talk about it now, and it, it just always feels like I'm talking about somebody right. else. It's I'm like, like, you really I can't believe this? Yeah, I'm like, I cannot believe that that it's was my so story. Yeah. And I feel like there's so many people and out there. <laughs> you know what? I snapped because it's just like, it literally went by like that now yeah. that you think about it. Because the year went by so fast. It did. And it's just like, what? It literally was like... It's surreal almost now like to talk about it. like six months of treatment, essentially. Yeah. And then recovery took about, I'd say, three to four three months four for months me to feel after, like yeah. I was like back to yeah. like a normal level of yeah. strength. Because chemo takes a toll on your body. It definitely so does. I was just like... I, it was just so many things. I just could not believe, like, I cannot believe this is that my you went story. through this. Yeah, I can't like, believe it. But it, it it's for a reason. Whatever that reason is, only God knows. But you right. are going to figure it out more and more and I feel like you just speaking to us now like I'm yeah. sure you're touching so many people to have gone through something like this and still come out I mean you went through it like mm-hmm. we just said and you're coming out so victorious yeah. so just graceful and and just inspiring as hell yeah. going straight into working yeah. and and figuring out your business like she didn't take no time off for real yeah. for real like I remember <laughs> we were in the house and even going through chemo, still was in on the couch, like on her computer, yeah. researching something or yeah. talking to something, someone about something or researching something. And I was just like, wow, like yeah. I love that because you just you didn't stop, yeah, Honestly, and you didn't it let it choice. stop you. It was and a it's choice. A choice. You have to, it's I a could choice. I could have chosen yeah. to go through that in a very like different bad way. attitude, and I probably would have been justified by yeah. that. I mean, Heck granted. Yeah. I'm going through chemo like right. at 26 years old. So right. it's like I would have been justified in it, but it was a daily choice to mm. choose victory when I didn't mm. even have the victory myself. Mm. So it was like a daily choice to be intentional. And let me tell yes. you, every day was not easy. Right. I mean, I never forget going to my first treatment. Mm-hmm. I was just upset. Oh, man, of course. I was so I was just like kind of in a bad attitude and like me and my family were big on like speaking life, yeah. you know, sp- like in our words like speak life, speak life whatever because that's just something that we have hold very important to us. So, mm-hmm. I remember I said something that was basically like negative on the mm-hmm, way mm-hmm. to um the hospital and my mom was like you better speak life or whatever. Amen. And she was right, but I, yes. I bring that up because in the moment, now granted they gave me my time to 
you know, go sit, have go your through, moments, have my moments. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, you know, I, I believe you should let people have their moments, but yeah. at the same time, come on, get, get back to that point where you're believing and trusting God yes. that speak life to this situation. Yes. I never forget. We was on the way to my first treatment and I was just in the nasty Aww. attitude. I just, I was basically talking crap in the back seat. Like I just didn't want to go. Of course. And she was like, you better, you better get it together. She said, get it together because mm. you know, you have to set your mindset mm-hmm. because the mental your mind is, is so everything. Is everything. The moment you let your mind go, yeah, yeah, she I was feel trying that. to get me mm. back. She was like, No, I need you to mm-hmm. walk in here. Like, you're gonna a have warrior. your days, but I need you to walk in here, yes. like, with a different mindset. Yes. Because if you walk in here and stay in this mindset, yeah. she's like, You know, this mm-hmm. can be a hard yeah. process for you. Like, of yeah. course, we're believing God that we're coming out of this, and so. Again, I'm grateful. Get some people in your life that mm. will force you to push through mm-hmm. that, to for, force you to take another perspective, to choose yes. another mindset. Yes. Because had I not, I, I really could have chosen to go through that a completely different way. And I feel right. like if I would have chosen the more negative way yeah. to go through that, it wouldn't have been as much fruit as yes. I've seen from that yes. process. And yes. so... I, you have it's, it. It was hard. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it was easy at all. It was hard every day Definitely. to wake up and choose and joy, choose, choose big joy, choose that I Amen. I'm gonna act like I have the victory over Amen. this disease before I actually Claiming have it, it. Before you have it. it, yes. And you know we like to write stuff like that yes. off sometimes, but it's really like a position and a mindset that'll help you get through things if you can just yes. if you can just see the promise yes. before before you go through the process. If you mm. could just keep your focus mm. on that that you'll 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 go through things easier if you can mm-hmm. just kind of remind yourself daily and again people I feel like a lot of times we like to fantasize this type of process or we like to fantasize choosing to look at things this way it's not easy mm-hmm. it's not pretty it's not like I'm we're sitting here trying to say you know choosing to walk through situations like that is easy because Mm -hmm. it's not it was very hard every day Mm -hmm. but if you're just intentional about choosing joy every day choosing a certain mindset Mm -hmm. every day it'll really help you get through Mm -hmm. certain stuff so Mm -hmm. you know listen she hit me with that one if you choose to see the promise before the process yeah mm, that will change your mindset it is a mm-hmm. choice. It is a it choice. Helps. And that is so real. Like, and I, I noticed for myself where like, yeah, the 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 moment you change your mind about something, mm-hmm. it changes the whole trajectory of yeah. your like journey with it. Yep. You know what I mean? That's, oh, that's so good. you could have chosen I to have chosen the other one to be You know what I'm saying? And you would have been grungy and it would have been I probably would have had made friends with the nurses. You know, <laughs> and it would have been a hard year. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a hard it like, been a, it, harder, it would have been harder than harder. what it already was. Yeah, because it was yep. definitely hard. Nothing about it was easy. Yeah. But it would have been that much harder. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. It would have been. So I'm thankful. So yeah. victory over circumstance, you gotta choose it. Oh, amen. You know, sometimes you just gotta I choose. Love you just it. sometimes you just gotta choose victory before you have you the victory. Have it. I feel like mm. because I feel like that's my motto always. I feel like in the end, God's God's desire for yes. us. God, God, if you know the character of God, his desire and his nature is never for us to fail. Yeah. So it's like if you keep that in mind, knowing that whatever is going on in my life is mm. not God's will mm. for me to be experiencing anything that's detrimental to mm. me, for me to be experiencing anything that'll take me out. If you know that like, this is not God's will for mm. my life, mm. it'll help you shift your mindset mm. and see, okay, I don't like what I'm going through right now, but I know that God is going to give me provision mm. or give me something to get me through this. Mm. And so it's like just putting yourself like, again, being intentional about putting yourself in that mindset mm-hmm. and trusting God that, you know, I don't, I don't even, even though I don't like how this looks right now, like in reality, this is ugly. Mm-hmm. You got to trust that God, that's not God's will, God's desire for you. So mm. that's my motto in life. Cause that's even right now. And, and that's, that's, that's one thing that I feel like gets, um, difficult. a lot of people and it gets difficult yep. because it's like, God, why am I going through this? And yep. then you start to blame him. Like, why am I yep. going through this? Yeah. And why, if you want, you know, what's best for me, why am I going through this? It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Those are questions that no one can answer. Yeah. Like, Sometimes why am I going through this? Answer. Like, but that's where running on faith comes from because you and just have to faith. believe. I was like, how am 
I'm gonna get you cancer. Know, you just have to believe that there's something better on the other side better. that for whatever reason yeah this was the circumstances you're yep. de- you were dealt with yep but i i just sometimes i'm just like like why why you know what i'm saying and who of course we're gonna ask that we're only human yeah and i don't think anything is wrong but like nope we can't blame god but yeah god that's hard it's hard right and i'm like a lot hard. of times i'd be asking god why like why why, why? and why? i don't always get an answer my mom talks about that all the time you know like how there's many things that she hasn't got an answer right. on right. in life but she knows that God brought her through right. those situations. We, you may never get an answer till you right. meet, till you get to heaven. Meet, mm. meet Jesus on the other side and ask so, him yourself. Exactly, Jesus ask him why? yourself. But you just gotta keep trusting. Like I want to, like God, I want to know why exactly. Why I need to know what why this that was man about. Cut me off? Like why did you allow this? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I deserve that. No. So I need some explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I really, you know what? I really hope God can answer all of our questions. Right. Jesus <laughs> when we all get there, he's going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Too, okay, too many of y'all. Back up, back like, up. all right. Y'all going to have security. We like, need you to take a number. <laughs> no, for real. Right. Because what the heck? But yeah. I'm so, um, obviously, because I personally know you and love you. Yeah. I'm just so happy for you and proud of you that you went through such a, trial and yeah. came out on the other side so victorious and beyond that like Thanks, graceful and yeah. just like I said inspiring to me and you have such a ministry like mm. literally Thank you. you have a ministry she works with her work mom and dad's church Y'all but like lot. her ministry for <laughs> real is like like I mean I just feel you like you're just such an inspirational person and you just speak life to everybody that you meet you are just amazing you know what i mean and i appreciate you so much thank you and i want you to talk about like what you're working on now and like the things yep. that um i guess that experience has led you to yep. and why and like where you want to go from there yeah so right now i am working on bringing back so let me say and this is not in any particular order, but I'm, right now I'm working on bringing Beatbox back to life. So Beatbox was a beauty subscription box that I had back launched in like 2015. Um, and now I'm trying to, not trying, I'm going to Amen. speak that life. Words. I'm going to have, and I'm working on um, launching my own beauty um, color cosmetics line. So, you know, I'm working on that right now. It's a lot, but that's what's going on. I'm working on like doing some new merch for my um, inspirational line. So the thing I kept talking about running on faith, that's our like, um, I guess what do you call it, flagship merch? Or I don't, don't, I'm like, mommy, help me. I'm like, I feel like mommy. We we don't know, but I'm like, we're doing it. It's basically the main apple scrap or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Apple scrap. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. The best selling merch. Okay. The best selling merch. The best best selling merch. But I'm working on relaunching. I had some cool ideas with that. And I kind of want to weave in some more. um, I already have some like um, merch that kind of speaks deals specifically with people who have gone through cancer like busy beat and cancer is another um bestseller mm-hmm. for like that's the shirt that i wore while i was mm-hmm. going through chemo because mm-hmm. that was my faith or whatever mm-hmm. i was busy beating cancer mm-hmm. so anyways i'm working on launching new merch for that i'm working in ministry a lot going on with building ministry and my family um my website eventually i'm gonna do a book um i know i heard god tell me yes. a book is coming Amen. i'm not concerned on when Amen. that's gonna, gonna happen. happen it'll just happen so yeah. i'm just going with when the flow with that but those mm-hmm. those uh, those three things are the main things that i'm working on right now Amen. so look out for beatbox i don't mm-hmm. know when this is going to air mommers but i am in the fedex grant small business competition yes. so you people over there go use all your emails and vote for me if the voting is not closed all by the of time them. you watch this video use all your use your grandmama email use your cousin email use your co-workers email all of them (laughs) you use all of them to vote for me because i'm whoever's email you have their netflix whoever that's it use that email too that's a good one like for real use all them people email because i'm um in that competition and i think like the uh grand prize is like fifty thousand. so Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. The biggest. Y'all, turtle. I heard wrong. I, need resources. I, I read wrong. I thought it was five k. Oh Girl, six. I'm about to go 50K. vote that thing Please up. go vote again. Oh, it's fifty thousand because and you can vote every twenty four hours. So I'm trying to one of the biggest hurdles um, that I feel like 
um, I've experienced as far as like relaunching B-Box is like resources. So right, financially right. and like finding people because right. I don't want to just go like the private label route. Right. I want to like have my own right. formulas exactly. and stuff. So exactly. finding cosmetic scientists and all that type of stuff, like exactly. that's the biggest hurdle in yes. this. So getting that financial help it would be a big help. So Honestly, I believe in God because I'm, for that. I'm going through the same thing with skincare. And- yeah. Ugh, it is it's expensive. If y'all don't even y'all don't even know, cause one formula can run up, and this is like almost on average thirty five hundred. Yep. So yep. you can imagine fifty k will do a lot. It'll do a lot of help. Help exactly. So, so those are the things. Go I'm out there on. and vote, vote, go vote. vote for me. Okay. okay. Where Period. can they go vote? That they can go wrong? if they go to my Instagram. My Instagram is um, Kirsten underscore Nache. Um, my mom will probably put it on the That's video. That's K I R S T I N. Underscore, Dash, underscore, mm-hmm. and I see a. I know it's like underscore. I think it's un, it's underscore. It's underscore. <laughs> like I'm like, wait, y'all. K i r s t i n underscore n i c h e. Yeah. So go find me, and then that's my website too. My website is kirstenandshay.com. You can read my story, all everything I'm working it's on, a beautiful whatever. Website. Thank you, sis. Yes, I appreciate that. So, anyways, you can go read all about me on my website and yes. all the victories over circumstances. Yes, and yeah. all the beat stories that the she beat stories. got coming to I you know. guys. I'm so excited. So, like, when that, like, I feel like the day when that comes, comes out, manifests, like, yeah. I'm just going to be like, oh, like, I worked for this. But I it was out. You know, Beatbox was yeah. out. I it remember out. when we came out of college. Oh, yeah, like, Mom I did, did shoot? shoot with yeah. me. She, you did sh- two did, like, shoots with me. Shoot. Yeah. yeah, she shot. I, st- I love those photos. I still yeah. have th- I still have those photos on the original yeah. Beatbox oh, website. I still have them, So too. y'all can go see them. You On my website, click the Beatbox tab, and you can go see the old photos of Mame um, for when I first launched. When she first It'll launched. take you to that website. And that's, I, I'm honestly like, I feel like we need to do a follow-up. I don't know when you come back into town or something like that, but about like the trials of a first time entrepreneur, because like you, there's so much in Mm -hmm. this whole process with me launching a skincare line. For those of you who don't know, like I don't talk a lot about the things that I'm working on on those things. (laughs) Cause like, I like to, I don't like to talk about it until it's done. Yeah. Also like, it's okay to give life to it. Exactly. I've challenged myself on that too. Yeah. Cause I literally said that the other day, like I was, holding the designs mm-hmm. um for the beatbox mm-hmm. mock-ups and i literally posted it and i was like i mean i could not talk about it until mm-hmm. it but i said i don't want to mm-hmm. i said i want i, w- I want to talk about yeah. like the great things like Why sometimes not? like yes okay there's balance people, in everything right but there's balance in everything and people's energy might even you know that's help what i said more. that's literally so what i said i said that. there might be somebody on that sees this story that has the answer to what I'm trying to find, figure knows? out. So it might be somebody watch this story like, I know a cosmetic I know scientist. Exactly. I know let me reach a out to grant her. competition. Like, let me reach out. I'm like, sometimes stop holding stuff right, in. Sometimes right. it's okay to just, just share a little bit. Share. Ask, you know, don't be as afraid to ask people right. for stuff. So I'm like... I think my whole thing with just, like, I don't know, not, not that I was being secretive, but also yeah. like... Being coming from an African household, they're like, yeah. don't say nothing to nobody until yeah, it's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Because they're just like, people have eyes on you and evil eyes. Facts. And da, da, da. So that, that's that too. But there balance. Is. Seriously, you got to watch with energy. What you share, when just you be share tasteful it. with to it. Whom. Exactly. To there whom, be tasteful with it. Don't sh- make sure your stuff is protected before you share it too. Because Bam. B-Box is trademarked. That's okay? Aha, there it's you go. trademarked. <laughs> so I was sharing, but I was like, no, wait a minute. But she's protected. She's protected. So I dare you okay. to try to take the beatbox. Okay. I'll send you a cease and desist. <laughs> I will. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will. I <laughs> will. Protect yourself. That's another word of the day. There you Protect, go. Protect yourself. yourself. <laughs> I love it. I, I know. Love it. So but yes. Thank you so much. Like that, yeah, you're doing a lot. And yeah, I'm just it's like, a lot. We're believing God that we're, we're going to get through it all. That all of it is going to manifest. Yes, because we're running on faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Amen. 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 I know. So this was great, Mom. Thank I you appreciate so you for having me on Thank here. Thank you. I appreciate you coming you on it. <laughs> and talking to us about what's going on in Kirsten the Shay's yeah. life. And I mean, I appreciate you. Thank you for being an amazing friend, mm-hmm. an amazing supporter, and just pushing each other to be better. Yeah. You listen, iron sharpens iron. Is Come that the on. same? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you need people in your corner who are of a like mind or if not of a like mind can help you see different perspectives Mm -hmm. and push you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have people that are pushing you to be better, to do better, um, you need to find new friends. You might need to 
It might need to might to reevaluate. Right. Yeah. Reevaluate. Just reevaluate. It. Just a little bit. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Get around some people that'll and, uh, push you to go to the next level. Exactly. And much mm-hmm. easier said than done, Absolutely. obviously. Like with everything. But yeah. there are people in your corner. You have to believe that there are some people in your corner. You just yep. also have to open up and let them know what you're going through yep. so that you, you give them a chance and hopefully they can also be there for you. Exactly. Right? So I'm working on that. But I know for sure that Kirsten is one of those girls that like she is there. I love her. Yep. I got you. And Always. I know she got me. And we... Mm. We just be like, what, what need to be done? You feel okay. me? So <laughs> I think once we start doing our like boss girl meetups, yeah. whatever oh, that now is. Now a pandemic. You know what I'm saying? We, Can it be over? We might. Yeah. <laughs> we should make it some kind of open where yeah. if any of you are interested in joining these talks where we can That'd all help each other out... That would be amazing. So yeah. let me know if you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah. Let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in something dope. like that. If we were to do like yeah. boss girl meetups and just talk about all the things that we're all working on and how we can all help and support each other. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like a think tank. Let yeah. me know if you guys would be into that or word. not. Mm. If you're not, y'all into we it. still we doing it. And the other y'all side, gotta be into it. Gonna be meeting, well, we're but, still gonna be doing it. We're still so. gonna be flourishing. We don't know about whatever. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> but if it if it is something that would interest this community, yeah. please let us know. Yeah. And if That'd you're listening, hot. you know, please and also we could subscribe. Do, like, meet actual meet up ones. That's yes. what I was talking about. Like when the pandemic when is the over, pandemic like, actually ends. Do meet like meet little pop up meetups like in the city somewhere. Like let's That'd meet up and like let's just. That'd be beautiful. You know, connect. So. And on that topic, actually, like I want to do more uh, VOC workshops and things mm, like that yeah. when we have time. Yeah. But we need to do all of it. Yeah. All of it. So it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's soon come. Soon That's coming. That's the vision. In time. Yep. So thank you so much, Kirsten, for coming today. Thank you all for listening and watching if you're watching. Yay. And I hope that you join us again for the VOC podcast next week. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye.